What's up guys, welcome back to this series on JavaScript. In this video, we will learn about two different types of data, text and numbers that are commonly used in programming. We will first see how we can print these data, then we will learn a concept called variables which allows us to store these data and work with them. It's going to be an interesting video, so let's get started. Let's talk about textual data first. In programming, text are termed as strings. Strings represent the textual data and from now on, when I say string, remember that I'm talking about text. In JavaScript, we use quotation marks to represent strings. Here, I love JavaScript is a string. Similarly, JavaScript is fun is also a string. We can use either single quotes or double quotes to represent strings, it doesn't really matter. However, we cannot mismatch quotes like using double quotes at the beginning and single quotes at the end. Now let's see strings in JavaScript code. I'm going to print strings using the console log method. So here on my compiler, I'll say console.log I love JavaScript. Similarly, on the next line, I'll say console.log JavaScript is fun. Now let me run this code. As you can see, the text I love JavaScript and JavaScript is fun are printed to the screen. In this program, whatever is inside the quotes, either single or double is treated as a string. But remember, the quote should be of the same type. You cannot start the string with a double quote and end with a single quote. You also cannot start with a single quote and end with a double quote. I'll show you when I try to run this program, I get an error. In 2015, a new version of JavaScript was introduced known as ES6. It introduced a new way to denote strings using template literals. Template literals use the tick mark. Let's see how we can use tick marks in a code. So I'll remove this old code and I'll say console.log and then instead of single quote or double quote, I'll use this tick and I can say I love JavaScript let me do the second line, console.log, tick JavaScript is fun. Now when I press the run button, I get the same output as before. That means both of these are valid strings. Also, one quick reminder, the semicolon at the end of statements in JavaScript is optional. You can decide to use it or omit it. However, follow a consistent pattern throughout the project. If you're using semicolons, use them throughout the program. If not, don't use them in your program. So here I can remove both semicolons and when I press run, my code will still run. Another data type that is commonly used in JavaScript is the numeric data and there are two commonly used numeric data types in JavaScript, integers and floats. The difference between integer and float is that integer is a whole number and float is a decimal. We can use the same console log method to print integers and floats as well. Let's see an example quickly. So I'll remove the old code and I'll say console.log8. Similarly, in the next line, I'll say console.log80.5. And now when I press run, you can see that 8 and 80.5 were printed on the screen. Notice that I have not used quotation marks with numbers. This is because if we use quotations with number, the number will actually be a string. Here, I can surround these numbers with quotation marks. And when I press run, although I get the same visual output, these are actually strings for JavaScript. If you're enjoying this video, please also check out Program is Pro, where we provide tutorials along with quizzes and challenges, which will help you practice and test your learning in real time. Also, the course includes projects to give you an awesome experience of how programming works in the real world. And for our YouTube subscribers, we are giving 50% off on the yearly plan. Sign up by scanning this QR code or use the link in the video description to claim your discount. Till now, we learned about strings and numbers and how to print them. In real case scenarios, we may need to store and use this data in our program and not just print them. To store data and use them later in our program, we use something called variables. Before explaining more about variables, let me first give you an example. I'll remove this old code and I'll say let language equals 
javascript here we have used let to create a variable language and it has the string data javascript to store data in a variable we are using the equal operator or the assignment operator now instead of printing the string i can print the variable and get the string as output so here i'll say console.log and language semicolon now when i press run you can see that javascript got printed remember this when we print a variable inside console log it shouldn't be enclosed inside the quotation marks because if we print the variable name inside the quotation marks it is printed as a string let me show you i will add quotation marks around this language variable and when i press run this time i got language which is the string language instead of javascript which is the value of the variable language we can also assign numeric data to variables in a similar way we assign strings to variables let's take a look i'll remove this old code and i'll say let number equals 5 and then let me try to print it so console log number semicolon and now when i press run you can see that the variable number has the value 5 another way to declare variables is using the keyword var let me show you so let me remove this old code i'll say var name equals jack similarly on the next line let me print out the name so i'll say console log name and when i press run then the code runs without any error in modern javascript we rarely use var to declare variables however some browsers might still use var so don't get confused if you see var somewhere in the code remember that it is a variable declaration we will discuss the advantages of using let over var in later videos we now know that variables are used to store data but what if we want to store different data in the variable don't worry you can simply assign new data to the variable let me show you an example so i'll remove this old code and i'll say let name equals puneet which is my name and in the next line i'll say console.log name here the name variable stores the string data puneet and that's why when i run the code i get puneet as the output now i'll assign a new value to the name variable so in the next line i'll say name equals james and let me say console.log name again i'll run this code and as you can see i get puneet and james as output let's see what's happened here initially the value of name was puneet and that's why this line console.log name printed puneet later we change the value of name to james and that's why when the code reached line 5 when we try to print name since the latest value of the name variable was james we got james as the output as you can see we can change the value of a variable which is why they are called variables hope that makes sense so far we saw that we can assign data directly to a variable however we can also assign a value of one variable to another let me show you an example so let me remove this old code and i'll say let name equals puneet let surname equals jajodia which is my surname here i have created two variables name which has the value puneet and surname which has the value jajodia as you can see both the variables have different values now i'll assign the surname variable to the name variable and print the name variable so here on line 4 i can say name equals surname and let me try to print the value of name let me run this code and you can see that we got jajodi as output this is because in this line the value of name is assigned the value of surname which is jajodi so far we have learned about let and var to create variables however there is also another way to create a variable and that is using const const is generally used to create variables whose values remain constant throughout the program consider a scenario where we want to create a variable that stores the passport number of a citizen since we know the passport number will remain the same all the time we can create the variable as const let's see how we can create variables using const 
I'll remove this old code and I'll say const passport number equals 39983 which is just a random number that came across my mind and let me print that first. Here we have created a variable using const. When we run this code, we get 39983 as output. You can see that creating a variable using const look quite similar to creating the variable using let. However, if we create variables using const, we cannot change its value later in the program. Let's see what happens if we try to change the value of this const variable. Let me assign a new value to the passport number variable or at least try to do that. So on next line, I'll say passport number equals 44325. Oops, it should be equals 44325. And let me try to print out the new value of the passport number. Now let's run this code and see what will be the output. You can see that it says type error assignment to constant variable. This is because once you declare a variable using const, you cannot change it. Okay guys, we need your support to keep this kind of content free for all users. YouTube really likes engagement on the video, so leave a comment below, press that like button and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get the engagement score high up so that more people can discover and enjoy these courses. So far, we have been assigning some value to a variable. However, if we declare a variable and don't provide any value, then what will be the value of the variable? Let's try an example. Here on my compiler, I will create a variable name and simply print the variable without assigning any value. So I'll say console.log name and let me run the code. Here we can see undefined as the output. Whenever we create a variable without any value, the variable is assigned with the value undefined. However, if we create a variable using const, we need to provide some value to it. We cannot use the const to declare the variable without assigning any value to it. Let's see what happens if you try to do that. So I'll remove this old code. I'll say const name and let me try to print the value of name. If I press run, then JavaScript throws an error. It says missing initializer in const declaration, which means that this is not allowed. We can also explicitly assign undefined to a variable. Let's see an example. I'll remove this old code and I'll say let name equals Puneet. So let me first try to print it out. Now in the next line, I'll say name equals undefined. And in the next line, let me try to see if that was successful or not. You can see that the undefined does not have quotation marks before and after it. That means it's not a string. When I press run, you can see that I have been successful in assigning the value undefined to the variable name. Previously, we saw examples of printing variables and strings separately. However, we can also print them together in a single line. Let's see an example. I'll first create a variable named city and give it the value New York. So I can say let city equals New York. Now I'll use console log to print the string city and the variable city together. So I can say console.log city plus city. Let me run the code and you can see that city New York was printed. Here the plus operator joins the string city with the value of the variable city which is New York and that's why we got city New York here. Another way to print the string and variable together is using template literals. Let me modify this code. I'll remove this second console log statement and add the new print statement with template literals. So I'll say console.log city and then I can say dollar curly braces city. And now when I press run, let me put the semicolon here just for consistency. When I press run, I get the same value as before. Let's see what's happening in this code. Here, both the string and variable are stored inside the tick mark. And instead of using the plus sign, 
I have enclosed the variable inside dollar and curly braces. You can also see that my compiler's color coding clearly separated this out to show that this is a variable. Let's see another example. I'll remove this old code. In fact, I'll only remove the console log and I'll say let KFC locations equals 10. That means there's 10 KFCs in New York, which I don't know is true or not. It's just a random guess. So I'll say console.log city plus city plus comma plus K KFC locations plus KFC locations. Let me run this code and it says city New York KFC locations 10. I can make this format a bit better and let me add a comp space here as well. Okay, when I press run, you can see that city New York KFC locations 10 was printed. Here I have used plus to print strings and variables together. Let's use template literals now. I'll start with the same code, but I'll replace this console log with the new console log statement using template string. So here, let me replace this with ticks at the end and in the beginning. I don't need this, I don't need this plus as well. And since I want to print the value of the variable city, I'll say dollar curly braces. Similarly, I don't need all of this. I can just put the comma and then KFC locations. I want this, so I will just put again because I want to print the value of the variable KFC locations here. So I'll put this inside dollar and curly braces. When I press run now, I get the same output as before, but you can see that this is much more readable than before. In fact, I just want to put a space here. It's easy as this. And when I press run, the space is now here. At this point, we have covered all the basics of variables. Let's now talk about how to choose a good variable name. If you have noticed in our programs, we have used descriptive variable names like city and KFC locations. We can give variable names like C instead of city and the program will still work. And we can also use KL instead of KFC locations and the program will still work. However, it's hard to understand what C means just by looking at the code. When we use good descriptive variable names, it becomes easier to understand the code. To make variable names descriptive, we may need to use names having more than one word. We will follow the camel case format while giving names to our variables. In camel case, the first word will be of small letters and the first letter of the second word will be of capital letter, just like KFC locations in my code. Other examples of camel case variable names are first name, second name, my age, total distance. By the way, there are some rules you need to know while creating a variable. Number one, you cannot create variable names with space in between. Number two, you cannot start variable names with numbers. Number three, you cannot use certain words as variable names. You cannot use if as a variable name because if is a keyword. These keywords have special meaning in JavaScript and are part of the JavaScript syntax. We will learn about these keywords as we progress through the course. Now that we've reached the end of the video, it's time for the programming quiz. The question for you is, which of the following is a valid variable name? Number one, switch number. Number two, one switch number. Number three, switch space number. Number four, switch. Comment your answer below. And if you want to revise these concepts, you can find all the programs in our GitHub repository. I'll put the link in the video description below. Happy programming.